Hi, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. So I kind of did a similar video to this back in 2017 where I talked about ways and approaches to try and appreciate classical music because it's one of those styles of music a lot of people were coming to me and going, you know, how do I get into this style of music? And I think because it's so different to the music we're used to, it requires a slightly different approach. Now the video that I'm doing today is, is kind of similar to that, but rather than talking about classical music, I'm going to talk about the often difficult, seemingly impenetrable world of noise music. And the first thing I really wanted to do when I was writing up my notes was to try and define what noise music is, which is easier said than done. I mean, the term noise itself is quite problematic. What does it even mean? I'm sure if you played a feckin' Foo Fighters track to many an elderly grandparent and they would probably say that it sounded like noise. And similarly, I've heard loads of people call American trap music noise. So the word noise itself becomes this disparaging term for any kind of music that a specific person deems not musical enough. And in many ways, these examples unlock a definition of noise music. Noise music is an issue of traditional convention and form. A rhythmic, dissonant, unstructured perhaps, though that's a contentious point, lack of harmony, often elongated pieces, sounds such as white noise and feedback building harsh soundscapes, manipulating samples and field recordings. And as such, noise music can take on many different forms. You have the industrial sounds of Einsturz and Neubarten, you have the power electronics of Ramla and White House, you have the uh, uh, Japanese noise artists like Hijo Kaiden and Merzbo, uh, Purian, Incapacitance, Kevin Drum, the world of noise is a big one. If you've never listened to noise music before, you need to keep in mind that your perceptions of music will be challenged. These often glitching, brutal, difficult landscapes of sound and tones are so unlike traditional forms of music. You might search for a repetition to latch onto or a melody or a hook and you might not be able to find that. Or if you do find a repetition you can latch onto, it might be the menacing clipping of a sine wave or the metallic clatter of a snare drum or a loop of white noise, for example. You can't expect to listen to noise music and have the same experience that you do with other forms of music. It's highly unlikely that somebody who goes to listen to White House's Mummy and Daddy is gonna go and find a friend and then go, oh, I love that moment in private where I actually felt as if my ears were going to implode. I mean, it might happen because I have some people who approach noise music like that. Uh, but I think in general, you're, if you approach a noise record, you're not gonna come away thinking, oh, I really like specific moments of that. Rather, it's gonna feel much more like a singular experience. If you go into noise music with an open mind and know that it's not gonna be like a conventional form of music and you're not, you're not gonna get the same experience as you would with a conventional form of music, I think that's a great way to start. I would argue that the experience of noise music is very similar to that of ambient music because ambient music creates these worlds and soundscapes that will you to get lost inside them. It wants you to disconnect from your current surroundings and escape inside these different soundscapes. And although in a much more often brutal and difficult way, noise music offers that escape too. It offers a, a escape away from, uh, from meaning. So some of these tracks have that free associative feeling because the music isn't tethered to a specific theme or a specific idea. We're all gonna have completely different experiences with a piece of noise music, just the same way that many people will have different experiences with the same piece of ambient music. Take a noise record like Prurient's Black Vase, shut yourself in a dark room, put some headphones on and just let the music have its way with you like you would an ambient record. It could be like a scary, intense experience, but you also might find that the music feels enlightening. There's something enlightening and even in some instances calming about these, these washes of white noise, uh, these fricative glitches. You, know, you can have experiences you might never expect to have previously with a dissonant, arrhythmic form of music. For me, one of the most addictive things about noise music is the catharsis that it can offer, not just during the time of listening to it, but also when the noise music finishes, because the ringing silence that you feel after a noise record has, has ended, it, there's something so hypnotic and alluring in that moment. And so noise music becomes a way of approaching silence as much as it is a way of approaching sound and tone. It has a strange relationship with that because you almost relish the moments of silence after the record as much as you do when you're experiencing the sounds of the record itself. 
and I can't say that for too many records or too many types of music. Aside from talking about the assuals of convention and form, noise music is also capable of communicating narratives like no other music can. Now that could be the kind of free associative narratives that I'm talking about when it comes to things like ambient music, but for example, let's take a record like Death Pile's GR, which uh, narrates the story of the Green River Killer from Washington, and the way it does it is you have these, these harsh noise feedback distortion sounds whilst while somebody sits, basically just screams and wails the, these lyrics, often from the perspective of the Green River Killer. And I can't think of a better way, or a more disturbing way of communicating a story from the perspective of a well-known serial killer than with noise music. That's an experience that I feel like no other music would be able to accomplish, because it would feel, it just wouldn't feel right. It would feel as if you're almost capitalizing on the horror of the real life experience, but by using noise music, it feels as if it, it just perfectly fits with that theme. Finally, as somebody who talks in front of a camera about music every single week, the act of analyzing and describing noise music is particularly difficult. Now, how am I supposed to effectively describe a passage of ear splitting distortion in the same way that I would with a, a conventional instrumental passage? I think that in fact, the difficulty of me being able to put my finger on certain aspects of noise music, that enigmatic quality that it has is what makes it so alluring to me. I can't approach it like I normally would a, a traditional record. I just have to l let myself experience it. Um, and, and I love that, that noise music can do that. There's a great article written by Henry Rollins back in 2012 where he talks about his experience with noise music. He talks about this idea that noise music, because of its relatively small and niche audience, can often circumvent the shortfalls of other forms of music. You know, these people are doing this for the love. They're making this music for the love and for the connection, not for the money. You know, you don't get into noise music so you can sit in a hot tub and roll joints with 50 pound notes. This music can often feel like the purest expression of an emotion, and it's not there to please a staunch of critics because noise music is often ignored by those kinds of people. You know, it's just there to, it's, it's there because it's an expression of those artists and because that very small niche audience likes it. So in some ways it, it's, it, it refuses to become a product and it doesn't allow itself to become a product because it's, because of it's, so, it's so niche and it's so unlike any other form of music. Rollins talks about how unfixed noise music can be. It can feel like this breathing, alive piece of work rather than a product for consumption. And he actually uses the phrase, he imagines that it can make other forms of music seem like preserves in a jar, which is a, a really interesting take on, an, on a tough and often seemingly impenetrable form of music. Above all, just give it a go. Pick out a noise record, go to a quiet place or wherever, and just see how you feel. Because you might find that this very different form of music opens you up to new expressions you've never even considered checking out before. I realized that was a little bit rambly, that video, but I, I just really wanted to talk about noise music. And, and I want to introduce a new style of music to people and, and kind of start a conversation. Like, what do you think about noise music? How does it make you feel? Do you think it just it is just a load of rambling mess? Do you think there's an artistic credibility to it? I wanna have these discussions, so let me know in the comments section and, and we'll get to it. I'll probably do a five albums to get you into power electronics video at some point in the near future, so look out for that one and that'll be discussing one aspect of noise music. And we will be doing a listening party for a noise record, I'm not sure which one yet, but come to the Discord on Tuesday at 10 o'clock BST and me and a few other people will be listening to some harsh noise. Uh, so come and, come and have your ears blown off. It should be fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.